All right, we're talking about it again. Earlier last weekend, we made a video talking about Jacob Chitron, Arizona Coyotes defenseman, and the trade rumors linking him to the Ottawa Senators. We talked about what Mark Mathot had to say about the idea and why it was such a good thing for Ottawa to consider a guy like Chitron. We talked about what Sean Simpson said on TSN about how there is a link between these two teams. We talked about what Chicharron could be for the Senators. We talked about a potential trade package that was not really all too up to date because we were using information that was available to us like within the past eight or nine months, something like that. But pretty much everything that we talked about back then, I guess that's part one. This video right here is a part two because we had ourselves Brent Wallace, who is the co-host of the Wally and Mathot show, go out on the Twitter and give us an update as to the Sens Chitron talks. Now, by the way, Wally and Mathot is a show featuring Brent Wallace and Mark Mathot himself, former NHL guy and an Ottawa Senators, I guess I could say analyst, that's probably the right word to go out there and use for him. But Brent Wallace went out there on the Twitter and said this yesterday about the Sens and their pursuit of Jacob Chitron. There have been talks this week. The ask remains two first-round picks and a high-end prospect, plus Arizona would also take Nikita Zaitsev. And I wanted to let that sink in for a little bit before we dive even more into this idea here. Because Nikita Zaitsev is a completely different addition to this sort of idea. We had talked about Chitron. That's fine. Go ahead, watch the previous video if you want the entire scoop on that. But Nikita Zaitsev is 30 years old, 6'2", 194, is a right-handed guy, signed to the end of 2024, making $4.5 million a season with a modified no-trade clause. Take a look at the production that Zaitsev has had, and it's not really all too fair to go out there and look at this part, because he doesn't really produce all too much anyway. He had a career high of 36 points in 82 games played with the Maple Leafs in 2016-17, but ever since then he has not cracked 20 points once. Last season he had 11 points in 62 games played, 2 goals and 9 assists, and it's been somewhat of a meme the past few years, going back to his Toronto days, that Nikita Zaitsev is a lot more of an anchor contract-wise then you would probably go out there and say he is a good player for any hockey team that he is on. Not that he is super bad, I mean, he's a pretty okay guy, all things considered. He moves the puck decently well, and he's physical enough, I guess you could say. But for the price tag, $4.5 million a season, that's a lot of money right there. And so, hearing to me that this entire Jake Chitron trade idea revolves around Nikita Zaitsev going back to Arizona... Firstly, I gotta say, what the heck? Because Nikita Zaitsev has a modified no-trade clause on his contract right now that has a 10-team no-trade list. I mean, 10 teams, no-trade, that's about two-thirds of the league he is available to be traded to. Assuming Arizona is on that list, it is kind of a nice coincidence there that that is the case. Because normally, when you hear a modified no-trade clause, you kind of think, oh, okay, so if the guy gets traded, it means he has to accept a trade to that team, but no, in this case, it's just he's allowed to get traded to 20 of the 32 NHL teams, or 31, I guess, because he can't get traded to Ottawa. But the idea of Jake Chitron getting sent over to Ottawa for two firsts, a high-end prospect, and Zaitsev? This is the kind of deal that I feel like the Ottawa Senators should probably be trying to bounce on, because, let's face it, this team has already gotten so much better over the past few months that what's one or two more first-round picks and one or two more high-end prospects in the grand scheme of things? We had Pierre Dorian say before the offseason began that this was going to be, or excuse me, the 2021-2022 would be the last season of the Ottawa Senators tanking and being in the draft lottery race and everything. And he went out there and got to Brinkett, he got Giroux, he got him for pretty good prices too. Giroux, free agent signing, of course, and then to Brinkett, hey, you went out there and you traded such a small amount of assets to get this player. You also have the upgrade of Cam Talbot in that instead of Matt Murray. This team has gotten so much better, and it's only been a few weeks. So now, this is the big fish. This is the big one that you're going to have to shell out the most assets for. But it feels so much better, in my opinion, if you're getting rid of Nikita Zaitsev and his behemoth of a contract on top of that. 
I know that there's a positional difference here. Chitrin plays left, Zaitsev plays right. You also have a few other guys like Sanderson and Shabbat that play left as well, and so there might be a little bit of a problem when it comes to sorting out where everybody plays, but at the end of the day, that's a really good problem to have. Three very talented left-handed defensemen, Jacob Chitrin being one of those guys, and I get that there's an entire perspective that goes out there and says, okay, what if the Sens just make a trade for Chitrin without including Zaitsev? Because Zaitsev is a negative value asset. If you have Chitrin getting traded for Zaitsev, the team that's giving away Zaitsev needs to give up a lot more than if they were just trading for Chitrin without Zaitsev, right? Maybe if you take Zaitsev off the picture, instead of it being Chitrin for two firsts and a high-end prospect, maybe it's just one first and a high-end prospect, because the value of a Nikita Zaitsev is that negative. I get that there is a perspective that goes out there and wants to lower the price in that way, but I really do think that Nikita Zaitsev getting his contract off the books would be a very positive thing. And, I mean, he's making 4.5 until 2024. Chitrin, take a look at what Chitrin has for his contract situation. He's signed on for a little bit longer, and he's making just a tad more. 2025, 4.6 AAV, and he's a player that, as we said, was the top goal guy amongst all defenders last season before Shane Gostisbehere came into Arizona and took over that top power play spot. So it's all circumstantial here, I feel, with Chitrin. I do think there's a lot more left to give for Chitrin and his development. There's a lot more for him to accomplish at the NHL level, and I do think there's a higher ceiling for him than what he has shown off so far. And so if the price is that two first, let's say it's the 2023 first, 2024 first, and then a high-end prospect like a Ridley Gregg, for example, or a Shane Pinto, any of these guys with Nikita Zaitsev over to Arizona, you're filling out a need where Arizona actually can use a guy like Zaitsev. Like, they're not going to leave this guy in the minors or whatever. They're actually going to use him because they're Arizona. They need to get butts in seats, right? And they also get the draft capital and the prospects that they need as well. So this is a really interesting idea. I honestly like it a lot for both teams. And if anybody's going out there saying that they would not want to do it value-wise because, oh, the Sens would be giving up too much, I kind of just look at it from the perspective of if you look at the entire offseason as a whole... This balances out so much with the Debrinkat trade that if you took the Chicago trade proposal as well as the Arizona trade proposal for Chitrin and you said, okay, the Sens lost out on this first and that second and that first and that first and that prospect and they got Debrinkat and Chitrin in return, it balances out very well. Like, Arizona... Sure, you might be overpaying Arizona a little bit for Chitrin, you're also getting rid of Zaitsev, but holistically combined with the Debrinket trade, it works out nicely. Like, you guys aren't getting 100% fleeced here. Like, I feel that because there was some leeway and there was some robbery done on Ottawa's behalf when taking away Debrinket from Chicago, it gives them somewhat of a pass to overpay for another player that can help them out in that respect, like a Chitron can. They already got the forwards in Debrinket, they got Giroux, they got the goaltending, they have an extra year of Stutzla, Kachuk, Norris. This team can really go and do some damage next season, if they get rid of Zaitsev, and if they get a guy like Jacob Chitrin coming back. So if you're an Arizona Coyotes fan, what are your opinions about the idea of getting on Nikita Zaitsev? My perspective is you don't really care, right? Like, he's just an extra guy for a team in Arizona that's rebuilding. You guys aren't going to see Logan Cooley playing for your team next season. Maybe you will at the end of the year, but whatever. This team still has a lot of growth to do, and players like Nikita Zaitsev could be good transitory players to help you out in those times. You don't necessarily need a winning roster right now, and Zaitsev could be seen as somewhat of a cap dump, so it's okay. For Chitrin, though, this is a guy that you've had in the trade block for years, and now you take a look at whatever this prospect package and pick package is that could be coming back. Ridley Gregg is a good prospect, Shane Pinto's a good prospect, heck, there are other good prospects on the defensive side of things that I think could be good as well. Tyler Clevin, Jacob Bernard Docker, Lassie Thompson, there are some pretty good ones thrown in there, and if the Arizona Coyotes could get any of these guys plus two first-round picks as well for a guy that we thought would have been traded a year ago, I like that a lot. So... Talk to the comments, Arizona fans. Talk to the comments as well, Sens fans, on your entire opinions about this idea over here. Big shout out, of course, to Wally and Mathot, the show wherein we actually had this information sent out by Brent Wallace on Twitter. I hope you enjoyed this Vrijaj Rolls 99. And bye.